we're in a preparation stage. God is warning the church, and I don't know if anybody's listening to this preacher or not, but I'm still going to preach it, and I'm still going to shout it from the balcony, from the housetop, from the rooftop to the church. I want you to know right now that we're in a preparation stage. We're getting ready to go out. We're getting ready to go to another place. The Lord's coming back for a church without spot and without blemish that has made themselves ready. Somebody, will you help me preach up here? Glory be to God. It's almost time to go. God told me to tell you that the day is coming. And there's some reasons this day is coming. He said, when I'll pass through the land of Egypt, and it's a top, he's coming back. He's coming back for us, but he's also coming back in wrath against those that have gone against him. Those that have cursed him and hated him and worked against him and despised him and have, have lived in sin and, and have squandered every opportunity. He's coming back to, he's not coming back as a friend. He's not coming back to pat him on the back. He's coming back with power and with wrath and with judgment. This is the God that I'm talking about, the same God that loves us, the same God that's been good to us, that's healed our bodies, that's been merciful when we've blown it, that's been there in our midnight hour. This same God is not coming back as a lamb this time. He's coming back to to clean it up. He's coming back, praise God, to make it right, praise God. He's coming back in the name of the Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. He's not coming back as a wimp. He's not coming back as a coward. He's not coming back as a lamb going to the cross again. He's coming back as Lord of all lords and King, praise God, of all kings. Somebody will you shout hallelujah in this place tonight. Listen to what he said, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. Here it is. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Let me say what he said to us. And the blood shall be to you a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And I want to stop right there. And I want to go back. And I want to share some things with you. We're living in the greatest of times. And also listen to this preacher. I'm going to, I'm going to divide it rightly tonight, this word. But we're also living in the worst of times. Because like the children of Israel, God's Hebrew people, we are those people today. We are the same as they were then. The only difference between you and I is we were Gentiles and we've been engrafted into the covenant because of the blood of the Lamb. Because when you received Christ and you became born again, just like he said in John chapter 3, he told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Can I preach a little bit now? And when you come to God and you gave your life to God, and you decided that you're going to continue on. He said, if you'll continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And this is what I'm talking to tonight. I'm preaching to the choir. But I want you to understand that we're living also in a terrible time. Like it was in the times, in the moments, right before he came to deliver his people. Number one, they were under a, a taskmaster. They were every day and every night, they were crying out to God. There's a lot of people. I'm, I'm the same right I'm crying out that God would come because it's getting worse and worse in the world it's getting more wicked every time we wake up every moment it gets worse and it gets darker I, I, I'm not a prophet of doom but I'm just telling you that this is exactly the way God said it would be and you know the Bible talks about how they were under Pharaoh and Pharaoh was a taskmaster he was hard on them hard on them I mean hard on them and God got sick of it he got fed up with it and that's where we're getting to today God's getting sick up, just fed up, getting mad. He don't want to be, us to be here much longer. I believe this by faith because he gave me this word tonight. He told me, number one, he said they were under Pharaoh. Pharaoh's the type of the devil. And Egypt's the type of the world. And they were under the bondage of Pharaoh. And, and, and I didn't put bondage down. Really, they were under slavery. They were in slavery and bondage to the devil. And the devil didn't want to let them go. The devil wanted to destroy them and keep them here and try to beat them down. Try and say, oh, you're going to die. Oh, you're going to this is going to happen to you. You're not going to get out. But God said, oh, no. I, I'm telling you right now, God is saying, oh, no, church. Oh, no, that's not the way it's going to be. You might be under the devil's power right now. He might be trying to come against you. And he is. He's come against the church. He's come against the people of God. He's tried to do everything he can to stop you and to beat you down and to knock you out of the race. But I want to tell you right now, I've got some good gospel news. Just hold on a little bit longer because God's about fed up with it. God's done with it. God's sick of it. 
God's getting ready to send His Son. He's going to come on a day when you look not for Him in a time and an hour that you think not so. But it doesn't matter. It's even going to catch Jesus by surprise when God looks at Him and says, Son, go get my, my God, I feel God. Go and get my people. Hallelujah. God said we've been under darkness. We've been in a battle. You've been in a battle. Some of you have been in a great battle. You smile, but you've been in a battle. You've been in a battle in your home. You've been in a battle in your mind. You've been in a battle with your health. You've been in a battle with the devil. But greater is he tonight that lives on the inside of you and me. That's why he said, take the lamb, eat all of it, and roast it with fire. Set yourself on fire. Let the Holy Ghost set you. My God, I feel God. Let the Holy Ghost set you on fire tonight. Some of you need to get set on fire again for the Lord. Somebody help me preach and say amen. And they're under persecution. In Egypt, they were under Pharaoh. Listen, they were under slavery. They were under darkness. They were under persecution, under oppression. And look what happened Easter. How, I didn't really enjoy Easter. I ain't going to lie to you. I'll tell you why I didn't. Because I saw what happened to my brothers and sisters that day. They were slain by the hundreds they said that they set it up on them. And somebody said it was this group, it was that group. Let me tell you it was. It was nobody but the devil. That's who it was. It was the devil that orchestrated every bit of it. And I tell you what happened is they not only set off one bomb, but many bombs. And they, they calculated which way they would run so they could do the most damage. And they never would call them on the news Christian. But let me tell you right now, they're in a, they're in a martyr's paradise right now. They're in a place that, only, uh, that is reserved in heaven for martyrs. There's a martyr's paradise. You remember I told you, there is a martyr's paradise in heaven like nothing we've ever seen. Only the martyrs get to go to that. There's a lot of places in heaven, by the way. There's a lot of levels in heaven. There is a martyr's heaven. I believe it by faith. God revealed it to you. There is a martyr's heaven that they get to go to. But still they died. You say, why are you telling me that, preacher? Because this is one of the signs of the last days. So these are the things that, 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 that are really bothering God. These, don't think that God's not upset. Not, don't think that God doesn't see what we're going through, because He does. But thank God we've not resisted unto blood. You know, we've not been thrown in prison. We've not had things taken away from us. We've been a blessed people. We've been, we, oh, don't kid me though. We've had our battles. I've had my battles. You've had your battles. We've had it. We've, 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 we fought the good fight of faith, hadn't we, Dale? We've had to hold on to the horns of the altar, hadn't we, Jamie? We've had to cry out to God in the midnight hour when we couldn't even see our face because our, te our tears, our eyes were so matted from the tears. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That we cried that nobody saw. But let me tell you what, God saw those tears. God saw those tears. God saw those tears. My God, I feel God. God saw every one of them. The Bible says in the book of Psalms that not only did He write them in His book, but He's got them in a bottle. When you get to heaven, Kathy, when you'll get to heaven, there'll be a bottle with every one of those tears you've ever cried. Brother Bill, every tear you've ever cried, nobody knew about. It's not a, it's not a weakness to cry. Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet. I tell you right now, but there's going to come a day that we, we're going to weep no more. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. There's not going to be any more crying. There's not going to be any more tears. God said, I'll wipe it off your faith and your joy will be full in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of all lords. Aren't you glad? Will you shake your hand at me and say, thank you, God, for your mighty goodness tonight. But look what happened. Look what happened. God kept sending His Word. God kept sending His Word. He sent His Word time and time again. And that old devil, you, you say it's the world, you can say it's sin. It's still the devil that's got the world blinded, church. It's still this same devil that I'm preaching about tonight, that, that, that I was preaching about in Pharaoh's day, that I'm talking about tonight. It's that same devil that's got the world blind. Same devil that's deceiving people in the body. Same devil that's come to kill, steal, and destroy. I call him out tonight. He's, his time is up. And he knows that God told me that he knows that his time is short. Praise God. And the Bible said he kept sending his word. And God insisted. God insists tonight. God's not playing around. He's not come to, to take some kind of backgammon game or to play a, a roulette with the devil. God's come to take over. Amen. God said, I insisted. And I kept sending my word. And he's sending his word right now. And he's saying the same thing right now as he did back through Moses. He would walk into the court of Pharaoh, right into the devil's camp with the power of God in his hand. And he said, let my 
people go, glory to God. And he's saying the same exact thing today. He told me to tell you. He told me to tell you tonight that we are a free people. There ought to be songs of freedom, songs of everlasting joy. Let the minstrel rise up in your heart again. Let the minstrel praise God. Call for the minstrel, God said, and let him rise up in your heart once again. Amen. Somebody give God praise in this place. So what does this all mean? It means that it's late in the evening. Get right down to it. And God's getting ready to execute judgment. Because it's late. Each time, watch this, every single time, every time, every time that he sent his word, it was rejected. Every time that he told them exactly what he wanted to do, and they made light of it. Every single time, the plagues in Egypt. And by the way, every plague that was wrought through, through the whole plagues up until the last one, was because those were the gods he talked about that I will execute judgment not on the people but on the gods because but they were part of it because they were what were they doing? They were living for the wrong God. They were living for the world. They were living for themselves. And this is the same type that's going on today in our world. And we and we've got many pharaohs that want to run the world. We've got many pharaohs that are trying to take over. And this is a type because we know that we're living in the end times. There's many antichrists. There's many pharaohs. Amen. But the antichrist is on his way. But thank God there's another Christ, the Holy Son of God, on his way also to grab and get us out of this mess. Glory be to God. I feel God. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost now. Somebody shout, I'm about to go out of this place. The Bible said that God brought His people out. How? Through the blood of the Lamb. I've preached many times about all these things you've got to have in your life. But God said, Son, I want you just to tell them that when I come back, I want to see the blood applied to your life. That's the only way you're going to make it. You're not going to make it through religion. You're not going to make it through church attendance. You better hear me. You're not going to make it through playing church, who going through the most, but only through the blood of the Lamb. What's that mean? You're going to have to be in right standing with God, in relationship with God. You need to be right here, praise God, at the very feet of God. Amen. Right here on your knees, if that's what it takes to make it through well my God I feel the Holy Ghost of God you've got to be ready God said and I'm sounding the alarm I may lose my voice tonight I don't care but I want you to know one thing God is on his way again well somebody help me preach glory be to God in this place he's on his way again the Bible said he executed judgments against all the gods they worshipped in these every one of them it's just like the scripture said it would be in the last days. This is why this is going on. He showed me these things. Watch this. Every time, in every play, it got more intense. Every time they rejected it, it got more intense. Come on, let me preach. It got more intense. Every plague, it got a little bit more intense and a little bit more intense. And finally, he smote the firstborn. But you know what? It didn't have to be that way. It didn't have to be like it was going to be in the book of Revelation. He didn't want it to be that way, but he didn't cause it. The world and their sin and, and their mockery and their rejection of God will cause it. But you and I, praise God, we're not accounted with that group. I'm not accounted with the world. I'm not accounted with that wide gate and with that, 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 that great big road, that wide road, that, that great big road. I'm not on that road. Glory be to God. And you're not on that road tonight. My God, Freedom, you ought to shout all the way to glory. We're not on that road tonight. We're on the straight gate and the narrow path, he said, that leads to eternal life tonight. All I want you to know tonight is we're not under the jurisdiction of the devil anymore. There's getting ready to be a turn signals come on. There's going to be a turn signal all right. We're getting ready to turn and go up. Praise God. I just saw in my spirit. There's a turn signal. I can see it right now in my spirit. That God is getting ready to come back. And they're turning. Praise God. And we're going to turn. And we're going to go up out of this place. Hallelujah to God. Well, somebody shout. It's almost time to go. And I've studied the Word of God all my life. At least since I've been 26 years old I have. So that's when it all started for me. You know what? This really encouraged me. I, just, I, 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 I thought about not preaching on it, but I wanted to share it with you. One of the things that they knew that was getting ready to take place that they did is, listen, listen, I'm going to get out here with you. Now you go read it for yourself. Don't just take my word for it. Go read it. It's in the... It said when they went out of Egypt, the Israelites, the Hebrew people, 
said they had spoiled the Egyptians. Anybody ever read that in the scripture? Anybody ever heard that? <clears throat> oh, I'm going somewhere. This is good. They spoiled the Egyptians. They went out with wealth. They went out with finance. They went out with goods. They went